Hi everyone, good morning. Sorry I'm running late this morning, guys. I'll give everyone a few minutes to come in. And I'm just going to load our video in our comments. I think we're good to go now. And I'll recap what we've done. And then I'll show you what we're going to do today. I think we're okay. There we go. Hi, Liz. Good morning. Thanks for joining. I'm just going to give everyone a minute to come in. I'm going to recap what we've done. And then we can get right into it. Sorry I'm running late this morning, guys. But I'm here now. <laughs> I have um, two Distress inks in front of me. I've got Distress Oxide and Bundled Sage and Distress Ink and Forest Moss, if you want to play along. That's what I'm going to be working with today. And, okay, I'm going to jump right into it. So basically what we've done already, we've done a little... Um, a little notepad. These can be created any size. Uh, we just did a little mini one. And then I have the um, little fancy edge at the top. I've stitched around it. So this is like, um, this can go into a little pocket in our journals. We've done like a matchbook style. Um, and I went ahead and I just decorated it with um, a guest check and I cut out some bunnies just to give it something because the, the burgundy I found was just, um, it was too stark. So I went ahead and I did that, and then um, in here we have our little booklet that we did, our little booklet, and then um, the other half of the guest check from here, I just inked around it and added a little duck, and he goes right into our little pocket at the bottom, and then, yeah, that goes like that, and then this tucks under, and that's my favorite method um, for doing... Um, an element like this and you can do it where it's um, like three sections of where you score it and then it folds up and you just leave a blank on the inside for journaling I've made them like that too but I love having um, this one's Tim Holtz medallion but I love using like a Sizzix die or an impresslet and using it as that piece um, that tucks your your top into kind of hold it together like this for a closure so I love doing that. And then the other thing that I love doing too, I'm working on another project. Um, I don't think I have it in front of me. And I love using them as little closures too. So I'll take something like, um, like a Velcro dot and I will put it on the back portion of the closure and then I will use it like um, on like um, one of my faux leather bands and then I use it as a closure on a book so if I've made like a little file folder journal kind of thing I'll use it to um, to hold the whole thing together once it's um, it gets bulky once you start adding tags and different things and it kind of keeps it all together so the other thing that we've done we've made a couple of envelopes and we just took simple white envelopes we um stenciled them and we inked them up and then I did some if you guys can see the metallic I've done some embossing with my Tim Holtz stamps and this one here and I used um Recollections brand gold and I've used um gunmetal by um Ranger and then I've stamped here with Tim Holtz stamps and um done that and this one here um, the only difference with this one is I did some decoupaging um, with napkin pieces so we've got and then script stamping with um, papillion it's one of my favorite stamps and um, so we've got two envelopes here um, for the journal and I've done the little crochet laced edges at the bottom if you guys can see that and then 
here we did our little specimen our altered envelope here with the specimen and then it has that nice um, tab here that you can pull to slide it in and to slide it out there we go and then our journaling card here and then you've journaling space at the back so I like to leave things kind of blank so if they're going into a journal then either I can do if I'm going to keep the journal I can do um, journaling later or I can leave it for the recipient to use as a journaling space if I'm uh, gifting the journal so that's this one here and then we did this pocket and this turned out a little bit darker because I wanted to show you guys that so if you do all your inking underneath you're gonna get something that looks like this so it's more grungy I can still see all my images but I have that like grungy element all underneath from using the distress inks and then in here our little our tag and then we did the the element in behind so you have the two different images so once when you pull that out you're going to see the map and the other portion that we you guys can see that that we've glued inside there and then we have our beautiful tag and then you can use that for for journaling and then that goes just right like this back in and then we can see our butterflies and the elements through our little window here and then um, in the last video we did our folio so I showed you guys how to take the embossing folders layer them and do like a patina look and then I've also got some gilding wax on here so I have some bronze elements that pop you could do the same thing here so if I decided that I wanted this to kind of pop a little bit more I could just come in here and I could grab my uh, my copper so guys yeah, my copper the same as the other one and we can just add again just tiny little bit this stuff goes a very long way and we can just add like that copper if you guys can see you don't have to cover it you can just you can just kind of pop on that little bit of copper and as you guys can see this whole thing spins because we have the the brad on there and same with our clock hand so you can point the clock hand upwards you can turn the butterfly like this I prefer it like that but you could do it like this as well so you can turn these all around and our little see that moves guys so we can turn it any way that we like there and I'm just gonna shift that back there we go and I could add a little bit here I wanted to here to just to give it that something there we go so I'm happy with that and I have that little bit of bronze um, copper element on there oops good morning everyone thanks for joining so I just wanted to recap that and then on the inside um, we've taken and then I have the the um, this portion of the um, embossing folder exposed so what I did was I covered it in my digital kit um, vintage field notes so I covered it and then what I did here was I cut out um, this little space here for the um, for the window and I mounted the the entire piece onto here so this is really cute it gave it that little element at the bottom where I have a little butterfly and I have a snail and then this here acts as journaling space all across here so it's like a little hidden journaling space and then of course the top says discover beauty in nature and that's the field notes at the top and then when we open it we have that element of it being a folio so we can tuck something here in the pockets you could add some little ephemera pieces there's all kinds of stuff that we can do and then I have again um, bits and pieces of my 
of my um, field notes kit. And I didn't decorate the back because what we're going to do with this back piece right along here, we're just going to glue the whole thing and attach it right into our book. And when you make something like this, it's still, it's still nice and flat, guys. And you can do a couple of things. You could add it over top of your page like this in your journal where it sits like this. And then if you want it like that, that's when I would decorate the back. And then, or you could um, just put it right into your book like this and glue it down completely. Or you could glue around your sides like this. And then you could add a tag in behind. Or if you only wanted to partially add something, you could glue either the top or the bottom. And then just make sure that you're going around like this sort of thing. And then you can tuck something like this that goes like this. So if you wanted, like, if you had another, like, um, tag like this one, you can make a tag like this. Sorry, guys. There we go. You could make a tag like this, and then you could, you could add it like this, or you could add it like that in behind. So there's all kinds of things that you can do. And then if you were to do that, you would just want to glue, um, this right down to your um, and this part here right down to your um, your project and then that's enough room for this to just slide in here and it would prevent it from from moving you just want to make sure that you have an eighth of an inch gap between your two sides so you have enough room to pull it in and pull it out without it affecting where you've glued it, glued it down so I just wanted to share that so these are the things that we've done recently so we're basically just building our little ephemera pile for our journal, guys. And um, I'm not the... See, everybody has a different way of doing this. Um, I prefer, when I'm working on a journal, I prefer to stop and make a, a bunch of ephemera pieces. Because then I can use bits and pieces of my kit. Or I have, you know, like beautiful napkins that kind of have my nature theme. I use my stamps. And I can kind of collectively um, gather things towards my theme. Whereas if I'm making ephemera in advance, a lot of the time, um, and just storing it, a lot of the time it's not going to go with my theme, or it's not going to match, or be, it'll be like more whimsical opposed to um, having like a theme in mind. So when I'm working on a journal, I like to make my my um, ephemera pieces to kind of go with that with that journal, with the same kind of color schemes, with the same kind of thing. And the great thing too, um, a lot of the time I will work with multiple kits because like this one here, Vintage Field Notes, kind of goes with everything. It has steampunk elements, it has nature elements, it has birds, it has bugs, it has um, travel theme, it has, like it just keeps going, guys. And and then I have, I have um, moths and I have like um, bees and I have birds and I have butterflies and I have florals and I have postage and I have beetles and it just like again it just keeps going um this one here is a very large kit it's in two pieces so the first kit is 48 pages no 40 yeah I believe it is um no that there'll be 42 pages sorry guys because it's 68 pages total yeah, 30, 34 pages, sorry, per kit. 34 because it's 68 total when you put the two kits together. So the first kit is done like Traveler's Notebook. So when you print it, you have that uh, blank space on both sides because this is created to um, work with all of your um, file folder projects, your um, Traveler's Notebook style and size journals. So when you fold it in half as pages, it's smaller and it's that perfect size um, to mat like your your um your projects like this with your folios and your and your envelopes and if you're doing like a file folder project that all I'm gonna show you guys one when um when we're done this journal I think we're gonna start one and then I can kind of show you guys how to make one they're so much fun and it's one of my favorite things to make and they flip different ways and they all fold up and then they all have hidden pockets and hidden journaling spaces and they're just a lot of fun to make and um, this is my favorite size to, to mat everything with and the great thing is just you can use bits and pieces here bits and pieces there and then the other thing I showed guys so these are the pages 
and it's just like this and there's 34 of them and then what you can do too and this is what I did um, not only am I going to use these as journal pages you could actually so if you didn't if, if that wasn't your thing to make file folder projects or um, if you like to have journaling cards um, I showed that you can print this entire kit onto um, cardstock and then you can cut each panel out and when you cut each panel out these become like a journaling card so they're a great thing to make tags so they essentially were a full page and they attached like this um, but they are they are um, perfect for for, jour for journaling cards so that's another option with the same kit and then the second piece was this huge ephemera kit and it was the same thing it was 34 pages of just fussy cuts and it was everything from um, all the labels and things of this kit so I had like this one here that I had created um, Redfield's Moth and Butterfly Conservatory, Toronto, Ontario, Canada. I created all my own ephemera pieces for this kit. There was little air, air mail pieces. There's labels. I have them in blue, red, and all kinds of colors. So it was just a huge fussy cut kit. So that's the part two that goes with this. So they're listed separately in my, it's a shop. So I just wanted to share that. So it's a great way to, um, to use these to mat your um your projects and it's a it's a lot of fun to work with so just wanted to share that so now for today what i've done and i'll put these whoops these ones here aside so this is what we've done so far and i'll put those aside and then for today i wanted to show you another option so basically if you have an envelope, and sorry guys, um, I had to wrap this around. In order for this not to cut through to the other side, I had to like wrap it around my my cutting plate, and I'll explain that in a second. Um, so if you don't have an envelope that has a window, I'm going to show you how to make your own. So essentially, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to open up our envelope um, the same way that we did the rest of them. And then what we're going to do is you're going to take a die cut. So one of your favorite dies it can be anything, any of your frame dies, any of your uh, kind of like window dies. And I just used one of my uh, Baroque frames. And then what I did was I put it down like this towards the outside, just like that. And then I took my cutting plate because if you put it like this and you run it through your die cut machine, which I did. <laughs> it's going to cut it in a mess. I'll show you. And you're going to end up with something like this, where it cuts it out on all sides because it's so thin. If you guys can see that, it went right through to the other side of my envelope. So to save you guys that, I just wanted to share. See? Mess. That's okay. I can use it as scraps for something else. And um, so I just wanted to share that. So what I had to do was wrap my, so I put my plate down, my cutting plate, and I had to wrap this around like that and like that around the cutting plate, and then I put it through. So that's how come this is a little bit, um, this is a little bit um, wrinkled from just trying to slide it over and stick it through the, the die cutting machine. So I just wanted to share that. So I'm gonna show you how we're gonna cover this all up. And that's not gonna matter. And then this is how we're going to create our own window. So we can use both envelopes that are, you know, like our regular junk mail that are like, um, you know, like your bills and stuff come in that are like this that have your nice window envelope. But if you don't have any of these, this is how I would like to, like, this is how I like to make my own. So I just wanted to share. And then we're gonna take a piece of acetate. It can be anything. Um, um, a lot of my uh, kids' stuff, so like when we order them toys and different things or um, any kind of products, um, a lot of the time things will come with a piece of acetate. And it doesn't have to be too thick, but this one's a nice one. It's not overly thin either. 
and a lot of times um, you'll get like a piece of acetate in with your packaging. So instead of recycling it, I tend to keep it and I have a box full of this stuff. And um, they're great for um, all your projects. So I have like, let's see if I can pull that. There we go. It's a little better. And then we just want to cut like a little piece out here. So I'm thinking... And then you want to give yourself, if you guys can see, sorry, if you want to give yourself like enough room that we have like um, a quarter of an inch, like on each side, for this to sit and then be mindful too of where the lip of your envelope is. And then what we want to do is have this on the inside. So not the outside of our, of our envelope, on the inside. Um, let me see here. Yeah, it's just... Alright, so I'm going to cut this right along here, straight up, like that. Perfect. Just to take that edge off of there, and then I can measure exactly where I want this. So, I'm thinking probably right about here, and it doesn't have to be too big either. So, yeah, right about, I'm just going to put like a little mark, right about there. So I'm going to cut that across, and then my, again, you want to keep this an eighth of an inch away from your fold lines. So again, right about here, and I want enough space that it's not going to interfere with, um, with the actual window itself. So I'm probably looking at right about there. So right about here, and then I'm just going to give that a snip, and then I figure it right here, and I'm just going to continue right along that line here. And it's up to you, because uh, again, that was like a layered die. I could have done the smaller one on the inside if I wanted to do that. Um, so it just depends on how big you want the opening to be. So again, depending on the size of your envelope and um, the size of your project. So I just wanted to share that. And we could do the same thing too, guys. We could turn this into a folio where it folds, or um, we could just keep it as a window envelope. Oh, sorry, guys. And... Um, I just want to glue this down, so I'm going to glue around here. So I'm going close enough to the um, To the side but not like going over if that makes sense and then I just want to add like that and then I'm going to come along here along my acetate and I'm going to right like that and along my four sides just like that there we go I have some fuzz and I want to try to eliminate any fuzz that I have so it's not going to interfere with my actual project. There we go. So then I'm going to put this down and I want to make sure that I'm that eighth of an inch away from, if you guys can see that, away from my fold lines. And I want to make sure that I'm attaching this to the inside. There we go. Um, you could use vellum if you wanted to. Um, you could use a glycine bag. And I have one of those in front of me too. Because once we're done this, guys, we're going to get into doing pockets. And my favorite way to do pockets. So um, I did have a glycine bag here.
Oh, right here. So you could take something like a glassine bag. I ordered these from Amazon. So they're like a bag that you can kind of see through. So like, for example, when you put... something like that through you can still see it so just wanted to show that so it's very transparent so you could use something like this in your window or you could use acetate or you could use a piece of vellum anything that you like so I just wanted to share that so there's tons of options of different things that you can use in your window and then I want to make this a little bit more sturdy so what I'm going to do is take one of my panels that I had here and actually, I really like this one. Um, well, I don't want to lose the bottom, though. So I'm going to look for something that's more, um, that has more of my, um, the most of the elements at the top, so that I'm not losing. My whole design. Um. Let me see here. Um, sometimes it just takes me a minute to kind of figure out the game plan of what I want to do. Let's see how that one looks. I like this one. There we go. We're in the mushrooms. Um, I'm losing a lot of that. This one's like a lot of elements. Oh, that's neat. I like that one. And it's just kind of, I'm going to get kind of partial, partial elements. So then what I'm going to do, um, and doesn't have to, um, be like the whole size of the of the um of the window essentially what I want to do is just make sure that I'm covering the the portion that's covered in acetate so I could do like just an even um like an even section towards the back and the front so I'll show you guys this Um, so actually, before we go further, I'm going to let you guys decide, are we going to make a full, another folio or do you guys want to, um, or me, or for me to do a pocket? So I'll let you guys pick. We could do something like this or another version of this. So I'll let you guys decide pocket or folio. And I'll take the first answer that comes. Pocket or folio? Folio, pocket. Hi, Linda. Thanks for joining. Pocket. Okay. So, we're just going to glue this whole back portion here. Yeah, right along here. Oh, I'm sticking again. I'm on that last little quarter of an inch of my bottle. And then I can use my refill bottle and I can fill it back up. There we go. So, I want to make sure that this is a quarter of an inch away from my, from my sides. Right like this and this is um more sturdy so this is going to give the back more stability right like that and then what I'm going to do is just go ahead because we're not making a folio we're going to turn this back into an envelope I'm just going to glue these flaps down so I'm just going to go ahead and that's going to give the inside of our pocket some more stability right here and I'm going to flip it over and do the same thing here. So this is just going to give our pocket a little bit more stability. Okay. 
there we go and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue my two sides I'm going to glue here yep right like that and right along the bottom here right like this perfect and we're going to close our envelope back up right like that at the top and at the bottom and then we're going to take our envelope here and I'm going to pull the sticky and then I'm just going to add a little bit more glue so that I have a perfect closure right along here and right along there and then I'm going to go ahead and now that I've created this on the outside it's going to change um, where my um, my my flaps going to sit and that's okay I'm just going to push my fingers like this create a new fold line and this is the new line of where the of where the um, of where the flaps going to go so it's perfectly fine and I just line that all up and that's exactly how it's going to be like this and it's a little grungy right now from glue and the um, die cutting process and now we can decorate it so basically all I want to do now to open the envelope I'm going to take my scissors and come to the top and we're just going to give this a slight trim and I have a little spot there that's not even so I'm just going to cut there and that's how we're going to make our little opening Okay, it's so actually all that area that we glued that's not going to work so it's got to be right here where the yeah where the paper starts sorry guys so we're taking off about um a quarter of an inch there we go and then we have something that looks like this we have that whole back portion reinforcing the back of our envelope and then this is our front like this and then we're going to take another piece that's kind of like this and actually that might even be perfect right in there like that and then that's going to essentially work as our tag so one whole um so see in a standard envelope guys um that would be perfect one whole panel of of um of my kit so i just wanted to share that so you can use any one you don't have to use them with the mushrooms we could do something a little bit more fancy we could use um one of the bird ones. Oh, I like this one. Here we go. Air mail and approved. And then we'll see our little chickadee from there. There. Right like that. So now what we're going to do, we're going to ink this whole thing up. So I have in front of me forest moss and bundles, bundled sage. And I just need blending tool. And I don't have one, so that's okay. I can go ahead and I can grab a stencil, stencil brush and um, we can grab some Kimholt stencils. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna grab some from up here. And we'll have a little look and see what we have. Arches, I've got some speckles. Well, um, yeah, that's speckles. And then I have, let's see here. Um, maybe we'll add some circles. That's a ringer. Christmas. Let's see. Mosaic is nice too, but I'm not using multiples. I'm gonna just gonna use the greens just to kind of keep it simple. And I have that one, the flourish. Um, I think that's probably good. And I got grunge just in case we need that. Those are a couple of my favorites, and I like splatters too. That's one of the yeah, that's probably great. Okay. 
So we'll go with these ones. So let's start out by doing, and I've got forest moss. Let's do some speckles. I want this one. And I use um, stencil brushes that I picked up from Amazon. I like these ones a lot um, more than I like the um, the Tim Holtz. And just because his are smaller and they're harder to grip. So if you have any kind of wrist um, issues like I have, um, like the carpal tunnel or something, then you're going to find that they're a little bit um, harder to use. Just because of the size and the width of them, I don't get a good grip on them. So that's why I prefer to use like an actual stencil brush. And as you guys can see, I have really good, it's like using a, a paintbrush. And because these are water-based, I'm able to just clean my brushes. There we go. So I like that. That's that's some um, forest moss. And I'm just adding speckles. So again, we're just decorating our, our envelope. So I like that. And I'm using Distress Ink. There we go. Perfect. And then maybe some right along here. Yeah, right like that. There we go, so you guys can see what I'm doing. And you don't, it doesn't take much, you just dab it like that into your Distress Ink and then it cleans really easily. I'll show you guys with um, a little bit of water and a paper towel. And that's how I clean my, my stencils. There we go. So I do have quite a few of the blending tools, but I don't have one yet for every one of my inks and oxides. So if I run into that, and a lot of times too, guys, I'll just take my Distress Inks or Oxides and I'll just smear them onto my glass media mat and I'll go into them with a watercolor brush. So that's how a lot of the time that I actually use these. I use them more like they're, like they're watercolor paints opposed to actually like um, using the blending tool and inking with them. Or I'll use a stencil brush and I just, I love that effect, if you guys can see. And as you can see, I'm not pressing as hard on my stencils. And it's easier on my wrist. I just have to hold it. And I'm just using my stencil brush really easily. And it's not... Um, because the other one is you have to put more pressure because of the way it's designed. So, I mean, it's great for anyone crafting or whatever. But if you've got any kind of wrist problems, I just find this to be much easier. So, I just wanted to share that. That's my little way around it. And then maybe we could take... Yeah, I like this one for like the mixed media sort of feel. So again, um, if I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna clean this right away. I'm just gonna go into bundled sage. I'm gonna just do one of these and put some down right here, guys. And then I can take my stencil brush and just go right into it like that. And then I want to add, yeah, let's add some of these here. I like that effect. Maybe even, yeah, let's go in like this. There we go. Right like that. Then I can just have it in like this. And again, just a circular motion. Just like that, 
just to give it a little something. And I maybe want to add a little bit at the top, just like this, just to tie it kind of in. There we go. Just like that. And then maybe like just over here, like a little, there we go, like a little half circle on either side. There we go, just to give it that little bit of something. And then I'm gonna add some more of the grunged kind of look down here. But instead of doing forest moss, I'm just gonna come right into my bundled sage. And then I can add some like this. Like that. I like that. And then maybe add some up here, just to kind of give it some contrast. So this is how I like to do this, and I just blend things out, guys, as I'm going. And then it just kind of gives everything a different kind of element. And even if I wanted to just add, like, a little bit of something, I could just lightly come in. You guys can see that effect now. And I'm just lightly giving it some color. So this just adds to that green that I have underneath. All of this is a water-based product. So then all I have to do is just wipe off my acetate piece and um, wipe off the acetate piece and then it will come per perfectly clean. The only time you have to really mask it and cover it is if you're using something like um, Ranger Archival or Stays On Ink or something that's permanent because then it will stick to your acetate. So I just wanted to share that. And I would mask it um, just simply by taking your, um, hang on guys, I'll show you. Just simply by taking your die cut piece like this and just by putting it like this and using like a little piece of washi tape. So I'd use like a little piece of washi tape in here or, a little, or even um, like a little photo split or a piece of double sided tape and then just put this on like this and then if you're stamping so I'll show you an example of that so let's pull out our Ranger Archival mini inks and I have some greens here yep I've got rustic wilderness and I've got crushed olive so yeah we'll use this and we'll just put this here and I have a Tim Holtz set in front of me Here we go. Uh, CMS 111 Reflections. So we're just going to use one of these. Um, there we go. One of these little script stamps. And this is my favorite way of doing this. So I'm not going to use a stamping block. I'm just going to show you guys. So I'm going to go in. We're going to use Rustic Wilderness or we're a little bit darker. And then I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to ink this all up doesn't have to be thick it can be a little lighter there we go and it's archival so it is going to pop and go to the top layer on top of our distress oxide so I just wanted to share that and then what I like to do guys I'll show you so I'm not sure if I showed you guys my stamping techniques that I like to do I'm going to so I have this masked so that's not going to affect my, my piece of acetate. And I'm just going to come in like this. And I'm going to do little bits and little pieces like that. And I want to add a little bit more here. And then I'm going to add some here, here, and here, and here. And I just add little bits and pieces so you don't see like a full word it's like pieces of things just until I build up enough of that so I have a beautiful script that goes directly across my work if you guys can see that so I have this script that just sits nicely on top so when you're working with distress the inks sit at the bottom if you guys can see that 
and it doesn't matter how light or darker, darker colors are, oxides always sit on top of your inks, and then when you go in with your archival inks, your archival inks sit on the very top of that. So it's a great way if you're doing like a mixed media piece, if you're watercolor painting, or anything like that, it's a great way to get your highs and your lows, and um, just by realizing that that's how those three products work together. So I just wanted to share that. So I absolutely love the look of that. And just, it's super grungy, but it's also soft at the same time. And then what I would do, I would just simply come in with my vintage photo. Here we go. Right like this, my, just my vintage photo distress ink. And I would just lightly go across the whole thing like that and make that look a little bit more vintage right like that there we go I'm just right along here right like that and then this side here, because I love that grungy vintage look. Right like that. So that's a great way to create your own little acetate um, window pocket. But again, you can use anything. You can use a piece of vellum, and you can use a glassine bag. You could use um, anything like that, or a piece of. Um, or a piece of thick or thin acetate. Um, a lot of times, too, like our packaging for our, you know, like th even this kind of packaging, guys. I save all this. So when I have a better storage solution for my stencils that isn't their original packaging, I will use all this plastic for different things. So I can cut, like, bits and pieces out and um, put them into window envelopes and do different things. And I love, like, um, for example... I just took apart um, my Distress Ranger Archival inks and into the tin. I will use this packaging for, um, I just have to glue this like back down. I'll use all this packaging for, for tags and different things. So I don't get rid of any of this kind of stuff, guys. I use it as tags and I already have my little hole there. I can put my, um, my trims through there. So it's perfect. And you can make like little custom pockets for these to slide into. Or it could be a pocket. You could alter it into a tag. There's so many things. So it's just a great way to use up your packaging. And as you guys can see, it's already distressed and everything from the Tim Holtz packaging. So it's just, it's wonderful. So I keep all that kind of stuff and use it um, different ways in my makes. So I just wanted to share that. And the other two favorites of mine that I love to alter are... Um, these are from Hobby Lobby in the United States, and they are called seed packets. And a friend of mine lives in the States, and she had sent me some in happy mail. So I wanted to show you guys. So they're like a little envelope, and they come like that, and they have like, you know, um, the date planted, the date harvested notes. So they're kind of like um, ledgery kind of looking. And then same thing, seed type varieties and notes. And then they have a little window in here. So you could put, you know, like again... You could alter a, a tag or a card and then put it in here. And then it, and then what I like to do with these actually is I like to add them. So if I were to take this and I wanted to glue that into my book, I could do this like this, guys, and create um, another element here like that into my book. Or I could put it right into my book like this and then... So we, again, we could cut this out um, from either a frame die or um, just by taking a piece of our, of one of our, you know, of one of our digitals and by cutting out my window here and I'm just measuring it and cutting out my window and then we map the whole thing and then same with the back, you would just need a piece that goes like this and you'd mat it like that. And then you're going to glue it to your page. And then it creates that little that little tip-in. 
and the other one that I absolutely love, these are CD sleeves, and you can find these just about anywhere. I order mine from Amazon, and it's the same kind of thing, guys. You take your, um, your piece, and you glue it like this into the back, right like that, and again, my kit would fit perfect, right into here, and then, so let's go ahead and make this. Um, yeah, we're so great for time. So, let's go ahead and do this one. And I'm just looking. Oh, I really like that. So this has like, um, let me see here. This has birds. Right here. Um... Let me see. I do like that, but it just it has that. It's not showing that full little um, window portion of, of the birds. Maybe this one. Again, I'm going to get part of nature. Okay, let's see. That might be a better selection. No, it's going to cut my bird off. So sometimes it's just a matter of playing as to which one's going to work best. And then... We will find one. Um, okay, this is nice and grungy. Maybe we'll go with this one. Yeah, that'll be perfect, actually. So this will be our inside. There we go. And we have um, this one here. So you're looking for something that's just going to sit nicely in here. And then what we're going to do, we're going to fold this back so it's perfectly even with here. And then we're going to take our scissors and we're going to cut this completely even to our envelope here. Yeah. So as you guys can see, he's another piece that I can mount somewhere else and um, or on a different project. So it's perfect because um, I love to keep my bits and pieces. Because you just never know. I could use this on a folio. I could add, make it like a little tip in. It could be something that flips up. Um, there's so many things. It could be a pocket. And then I, I'd stitch around here. And then you could use that as a pocket. There's so many things that you can do. And the other thing too guys for creating a simple pocket. All you have to do is take a, like a square piece. Any size. And just you're going to score it. Um, just even like um, a quarter of an inch kind of thing. Half inch, quarter of an inch whatever size you're comfortable with and then I taper my corners so I'm cutting them on it on an angle on every side so that it's not interfering with your folds and then you're gonna fold the two sides in the bottom one up and over and you place your glue right along here here and here and then that is how you mat that into your uh, and I could corner around this if I wanted to make it more finished looking and I can glue that right to my um, journal page and then I could take something like this and tuck it into my pocket or, um, yeah, something like that. Tuck it right into my pocket. And then it's going to sit right like that at the bottom. If you guys can see that. So that's just how to make a simple pocket for inside your, um, your journal. So I just wanted to share that. Then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to glue the entire back of this one here. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to glue the whole back. I'm going to leave that, um, again, that eighth of an inch from the top because that was kind of sticking out and that's okay. So I'm just going to glue this whole thing in because I don't want this to move. Once that goes into my pocket, it's going to be the back of it. And it reinforces my pocket as well. There we go, that's perfect. And then I'm going to open my pocket, hold it like that, make sure that I'm completely straight and the right side up. Yeah, right like that. And I'm gonna slide this right into my pocket, right like this, and just keep going, going, going really quickly until I get that right in there, just like that. And then I'm gonna put my pressure down, and then I know that my, my pocket is going to be completely stuck to the back of here yeah, to the back of here okay 
and then um, I can do one of two things. I can close this up and I can cut it or I can cut this off. So it's whatever your preference is. So I think just to reinforce everything, I'm just going to go ahead and add that little bit of glue right along here. Um, it just reinforces it. And we'll glue our pocket down like that. And then I'll go ahead, go to the top. Oh, and that's the thing too. So you can open this from the top. You can open this from the side. Um, so however you want your pocket to go in your book, there's no right or wrong way. You can do it anyway. And you can make like um, a tag to go this way that sticks out or a tag to go in or um, whatever you want to do. But just for this one, I'm going to do the top. So we just come here and we, we're going to just cut this right along the opening. I don't um, cut too much off. It's just enough that we're going to open up this envelope. So it's just me taking off a sliver. It's not even enough for me to be uh, making like a cut. There we go. And then it just opens that up like this, like the rest. And then again, we can put a tag or pocket in here and we can alter it and um, cut it down and um, and then we decorate the front and I would do the same kind of thing guys I would just take my um, you could do decoupage I've done this where I've done like little birds on the side or florals um, depending on the theme of my journal or my or on my folio or my envelope or whatever I'm doing um, whatever the theme is and same thing we could just and this is beautiful too guys because this is the um see and then the other thing too your distress oxides and inks don't do anything they just they, they sit on your mat so when you're ready to keep going you can just come right back into them like this so that's the other great thing too they don't um they don't dry up like acrylic paint or anything And they do, they, when you're working on um, the craft stock, your distress just pops, if you guys can see that. And this is already done like kind of like in a grungy sort of um, style. So that just gives it that little something. And the other thing too, I flip my stencils over guys, and then when you flip them back, um, you're getting like the opposite side of your design so that's the great way to keep things kind of symmetrical from one side to the next side I'll flip my stencil this way and do it here and I'll flip it back and do it here I'll flip it this way to go up here and flip it back to come up here so that's another little um, hack that I like to do just to keep everything kind of symmetrical and you don't have to go like too crazy and see I have some all over my my uh, window and all you have to do is just grab a piece of paper towel your distress sprayer and I just give it a little bit because it's just a mister and then I just come in like that and like that and that picks up any extra that you have on here. The only time that you'd want to, again, you'd want to mask it is if you're using Ranger Archival ink. But the other thing too, guys, if I wanted to go back in with the Ranger Archivals to make this sort of cohesive and match, whoops, um, they're right here. Yeah, my rustic, and I'm using a uh, rustic wilderness. So the only time that I would really, um, be concerned is if I were stamping like a big area. But I can be pretty careful with this where I'm not going to go in. And I will show you that. Like I'm not going to stamp the actual thing. Because I'm just doing bits and pieces. So again, I take my stamp in my hand and I just, yep, come in like this. And very carefully, I can pretty well position it where I'm not going to touch anywhere near there. And again, like that, I can do that in one piece and kind of here, here, and I have some right there and right here, there. 
So just like that. So I'm really happy with that. And it's just a great way to add all these elements in. So again, I didn't get any onto um, my acetate. That's just super grungy underneath from my, my digital kit. So I just wanted to share that. And the same kind of thing with this. Um, you could do some decoupage. You could um, add some, some inking. Because again, if you guys can see this, on something like this that has that little bit, if you use distress oxide, it is going to pop. So I just wanted to show you that. You could absolutely add color. Um, if you go on black or dark cardstock, your oxides will absolutely pop. So I just wanted to share that. It's kind of like using your distress crayons where um, they, they pop on the dark, um, the dark colored um, card stocks. So I just wanted to share that. So I think that's it today, guys, for my sharing. And then, um, so the, the only other thing is that you could do, you know, like your envelopes. These are the ones that we inked up, guys. So again, we could finish them. We can add decoupaging to them. You can add stenciling. I wanted to show you guys this too. This is just a piece of paper. So it could be any size, just fold it in three, kind of like an envelope style like this. And then you, t you know, you can, all you'd have to do is just do a tiny little bit of stenciling on here and maybe a little stamp. So it kind of looks like a little stationary page. And then that's a little something that you can tuck into the pocket. And then we can again, glue this and do it as a tip in into our journal. And then the other thing too, um, you can make envelope journals. Um, or you can make like folios. So basically what you're doing is you're attaching envelopes together. So like we would glue here, attach our envelope like this. So it looks like that. And then this is the next piece. And then the next envelope would go here. Or you'd go here and then you'd mat the next one here. Or even like this. So it's like this underneath or like this on top, depending on the look you're going for. So like that, and then you can keep adding and adding and adding and adding until all of a sudden you have this great big huge um, envelope. Or what you can do too is again attach it all the way down and then attach it that it's a top thing coming down like this. So it's a flip. So there's just so many things that you can do. And then you could have the whole thing tucked into a pocket. So you could take like a paper bag pocket. This one here has been... Um, embossed and then you so when you have your little folio together sorry guys it's not really working out for me <laughs> here we go your little folio together and it doesn't have to be huge it just has to be you know like a page or two here we go and then it and then it fits into your little paper bag and you attach your paper bag into your journal and then you could do some kind of thing do some decoupage on here you could fussy cut and do some collaging there's just so many things that you can do. And then that would hold our little folio like that. And then this one here, same same concept with a paper bag. Um, actually, we're working on a swap in, our, in my group right now. And um, I think mine might be handy here. I can show you. It's so fun. Mine's not done done, but it's almost done. Yep, right here. Sorry, guys. I have like the pile of projects behind me. So, same thing, guys. I've ripped my bag along here, and then I've tucked stuff in. So, yeah, mine's not done yet, and I've covered it in my kit, um, Purple Poison, my um, Halloween kit. I've used Tim Holtz Damask um, embossing folder. I've turned this portion here into a pocket, and then I've fussy cut and tucked in these little guys here, and that little guy there, and this little guy here. And then I have a little piece that I've fussy cut and I put just some cheesecloth behind there so it just kind of looks grungy. And I've added a little bit of um, uh, trims. And then in the pocket portion, I'm working on a tag. I haven't finished it yet and I started a guest check that I just inked up with um, Distress Oxide in um, the Crackling Campfire. And I used some of Tim Holtz Mica, Mica Sprays. So if you can see that, it's like flickering candle in one of his pumpkin colors. 
so is, is oranges so I've got that on there I just have to stitch around it and same thing I got to finish my tag it's kind of grungy but it's not totally done and then um, I'll be adding some more stuff to that pocket as well so it's just my my head start on it so we're doing that as a swap in my group so just a lot of fun so I just wanted to share that there's all kinds of stuff that you can do same thing you can alter um, like a paper bag and you can um, and then also um, there's um, so what you would do too you could do it this way like I've done it where it's just a straight pocket or you open it and I'll show this in depth more in another video guys and your um, doing one of these to here and creating like that and on the same side like this so you're basically just folding out that same um, crease line it just takes a second to get this right guys there we go and then what it does is it creates as you can see like this here we go so then you're gonna fold you're gonna fold it so that it's now all of a sudden you don't have that lip on the outside um, like see on the inside here where you have this thing um, that's to kind of do it like it's a pocket this eliminates that if you can see and now it's completely flat here and then it'll sit flat this way so I will show you guys that in another video and you can make um, a, like a, a folio where it's like um, you can make like a paper bag journal so I will show you guys how to do this in another video so I just wanted to share that it's a lot of fun so um, I'll leave it at that for today and when I when I come back what we're gonna do is um, put everything into our journal and then we can finish that project up and then I want to start a file, a file folder um, folio so I can show you guys how to make one thank you guys so much you guys have a great week and I will be back um, um, let me see. I don't think next week I'll be back the following week, the beginning of no of November. Or maybe it is next week and it's the following week. Um, basically, November 1st is my next kit launch. So I just have to figure that out. Yeah, November 1st. So that week, um, I'm just, I'll be swamped with that. So um, I'll let you guys know, but it should be in the next week or two anyways. Thank you guys so much. Uh, yes, Louise, I want to, that's the other thing, guys. I want to take pictures of all this stuff before we put it in the journal. So then I can show you guys um, each of these items that we've done for um, for inspiration. And I'll put them into um, the, the albums in group. Absolutely. I just haven't had a chance to do that, but I will for sure this week. So I just wanted to share that. Thank you guys so much, and I will see you all soon. Thanks, everyone. Bye.